the bell icon to turn on notifications. Analyzing data means you need to convey your output to colleagues and stakeholders. They might not always be well versed on the technical terms and processes, so the best way of presenting your output is by using a visual means of communication, such as charts, images, and organized tables. Altrix gives us a set of tools under the reporting tool set to help us tell stories using data. Let's look at how we can use the table tool first. The table tool creates a data or pivot table to output in a report. This tool helps us add the rows of data into our report, presentations, dashboards, or even PDF files. This greatly differs from our usual output data file because it outputs a read-only table instead of a row-by-row -row data table that you can manipulate afterwards. You can think of it as an exact image of your data columns, but it is in read-only format and can be merged in a page layout with other images. In this example, we are going to use the supermarket data that we have formatted and grouped into a summarized tool. The output is currently grouped by product line and month with the total transaction count and the total gross income for each line. Using this data, we wanted to output the data to a table wherein it is separated by month. Add a table to the canvas and connect it after the summarize tool. The table mode lets you choose from two types of tables. It can either be basic or a pivot. Pivot is only used after a cross-tab tool, while the basic one is more flexible. In this example, we're going to use a basic table. The next configuration lets us optionally use a group by function. It is a bit similar to the group by function of the summarize tool, but this creates separate tables of data per group. Since we wanted to view the income of each product line by month, we will use the group by and set the month as the field. Let's run the workflow to see how it looks. The output anchor shows three lines of months with a table included for each, but we can't see the data itself that is included in the table. To be able to see the contents of the table or object, we need to add a browse tool. Add a browse tool after the table tool, then run the workflow again. Now, we can see each line of data by looking at the Report tab of the Browse tool. We can now confirm that these three tables that we created were all separated by month and have their own Product Line, Count, and Income tool. The Table tool has more configurations that you can set to change the look of your output. The Table Width sets the width of the table to either Automatic, a Percentage, or a Fixed Amount. Automatic will set the width depending on how long the data inside the table is. Percentage will set the width of the table to a percentage of the page. 100% is for the entire page. So if you only wanted the table to cover a third of the page, we need only input 33%. Fixed will set the table's width according to your specific inches. Let's set this example to fixed width and 4 inches long. Next, we can also make one of the columns show a new bar graph beside the table's text value. Let's try this out by enabling the bar graph and setting the field to total underscore gross income. The setting button on the left side has more options for you to set the style of your bar graph. You can change the size in pixels, auto scale the size, set labels, change bar colors and outlines in this style editor. Let's set the label bar to No to disable the labels and run the workflow. The output now shows a bar for each line, with the lowest gross income having the smallest bar and the biggest value having the longest bar. We can also see the minimum and maximum points on the header above the bars. You can also configure how each column looks. The list box contains the list of all the fields in your data set. You can deselect the fields that you do not want to include in the table. To configure one of the fields, select or highlight one of them. In this case, we are going to select the field total underscore gross income and rename it as gross income USD. We will set the width to automatic to accommodate any particularly long values and align it in the center. Then we can also set a decimal place for numeric values. Here we are going to set it as two 
since we are using a currency. We can also set custom rules for the rows of our data. For example, I wanted to highlight the product lines that has less than $800 in sales each month. To set a custom rule, click on the Edit button. This will show a column styling rules window that lets you set new rules as well as delete old ones. Let's set a rule called Low Sales. Then we have three radio buttons that let us choose how we will apply the rule, Always, When, or Formula. Always will always apply the rules in all conditions. You can also choose to either apply it on the data only, to header only, or apply it on both the header and the data. When will apply the rule to a certain straightforward condition that you will set. Let's choose the total underscore gross income on the first drop down set the operator as less than, then type the value 800. Formula is also the same with that of the when expression, but it enables us to create a more detailed condition, such as using a switch case statement on the expression editor. For example, we will use the when option and set it as total gross income is less than 800. Next, we have the list of available actions to apply if any of the data meets the conditions we have specified earlier. You can change the font size, justification, text, or background color, add a prefix or suffix, change the decimal places, add a replacement text, or specify a function or formula. Let's choose text color and set it to red. Run the workflow to check your output. Now we have the lower sales, such as $592.11 USD, in red font. Finally, we have two last options in the table tool. The default table settings lets you configure the look of your table overall, while the edit row rules lets you optionally set a custom rule to each row instead of to the entire column. Aside from adding a table to your report, you can also take in images from your current data streams or set a static image using the image tool from the reporting tool set. Add an image tool to the canvas. The image tool has a white input anchor, meaning you can configure it with or without an incoming data stream. In this case, we will not connect an input data connection to it. The image tool lets us choose from three different methods of inserting an image to our report. We can retrieve images from disk at runtime, which lets the user insert an image from a specified file path or file name that you have in your workflow. When there is no incoming data, the tool retrieves a single image. When the tool has incoming data, it displays an image for each record. Store static image in workflow. Let's you insert a static image in your workflow and get image from binary data in field. This lets you insert an image from a blob file that you have downloaded via an API or have converted inside your workflow. In this example, we will use a static image of the Freshmart logo. Select the Store Static Image in Workflow option. A file browse window will pop up to let you choose the image saved in your PC. The image tool supports all PNG, JPEG, and GIF images. Select your chosen image and hit Open. This will show the thumbnail of your image together with the image info and size in the configuration window. Additional image settings are available in the style editor. Click on edit image setting to view its window. The used fixed width option lets you set a specific pixel size of the image, while the show border option lets you add a border. Let's set the width to pixels and set the show borders to no. Add a browse tool after the image tool to view your image, then run the workflow. The image is now available in your data stream to be used later when you render and fix the layout of your reports. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To get four free courses in Excel, QuickBooks, Microsoft Project, and Photoshop, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.